Welcome to that American Football Show, powered by EP Sports. EP Sports is one of the top suppliers in the UK for all your NFL or equipment needs. Check them out today at epsports.co.uk. Tim, Joe, Craig and I gather around the table today to talk about some thoughts on the first 18-week regular season finishing. Uh, some of our pre-season predictions, some of the top five moments of, our, of the season uh, and what we're looking forward to in the playoffs. Uh, but first, let's just get to some news. Uh, so obviously, Black Monday has come and gone and many, many, many coaches have been fired. I think this is probably the biggest exodus in a couple of years. Uh, so we'll rattle through them. Obviously, before the season even ended, John Gruden was ungracefully uh, shooed away from the Raiders and Urban Meyer got out of the, the Jags. Uh, Vic Fangio was fired on Saturday night, or was it Sunday morning, straight after the Broncos game, so he didn't even get Black Monday. Uh, and since then, <clears throat> we have lost Brian Flores from the Dolphins, which I think is probably the most shocking so far. Uh, we've lost Matt Nagy from the Bears, hallelujah. Uh, Mike Zimmer from the Vikings, obviously that's more of a, a, a falling out after many, many years kind of situation. Uh, Joe Judge from the Giants, a true loss for the NFC East. Uh, and very, breaking news that Tim's just announced, David Culley has now gone from the Texans. So, I mean, why don't we start with the Dolphins there? Because that I think that's the one that took all of us by surprise. Yeah, Simon asked us about that as well, didn't he? <clears throat> that was the first question. It's the biggest shock. And I, I think it was more sort of personal clashes uh, with the Dolphins hierarchy more than anything. The man came off two winning seasons, turned the Dolphins from one of the worst teams in the league to one of the most exciting defences. There was a draft pick that, looking back now, probably could have gone a different way, uh, but that wasn't his fault. So it, it's harsh, but I think it's, yeah, as I say, more personal one. And so what you're implying, that is the... The uh, disruptive relationship between Coach Flores and Tua. No, not not particularly that. I just don't think Flores and the Miami hierarchy were too keen on each other towards the end. Well, that's why I've been here in anyway. Yeah, it's definitely been like mm. Flores wanted to to do his thing, but he wasn't getting. I like, he, he clearly wasn't. He didn't pick Tua. That's been revealed. He wanted her, but so it just feels like there was that power struggle, and so they've cut him off. But. Yeah, I think Dolphins have done the wrong thing. On the, I think they've cut the wrong end off. I think as well, all, all the way through, there was Deshaun Watson hanging over them like a uh, sword of Damocles. So that couldn't have helped. Do you think they fired them with someone else in mind? Like, do you think they want someone who's a bit more of a, a yes man and is just going to do whatever they want to do? Who's that going to be, though? Because the other names that are floating around so far that are not the ones just mentioned would be like Doug Peterson, uh, Jim Harbour for, from Michigan, who's very much hinted he'd do a return to the NFL. Um, Byron Lefwich, who's the Bucks offensive coordinator. Uh, I think the uh, Cowboys offensive and defensive coordinators are getting some attention. Kellen Moore and um, what's his name from the Falcons? Old oh, Falcons head coach Dan Quinn. I don't know how he's getting attention again. Yeah, that's a bit too soon, isn't it? After his latest disgrace, well, him and the Falcons did not get on. And I don't think he's a very good head coach, so it's an interesting one. It's it, there's it's got to be accepted that some people are just good coordinators, but rubbish head coaches. There's so many people. Like, I'll give you an example: Bill Callahan who's a brilliant offensive line coach and offensive coach, has been for years. He was a terrible head coach in college and in football, but he's an absolutely brilliant position coach. And some people have got to realise that that's what they are. They're not head coaches, they're, but they're bloody good coordinators, which some of these guys are definitely going to be. I think that's a, a bit of a rarity because naturally to be a football player or a football coach, you need to have that, you need to have the ego and the competitiveness to want to be the best. And you do, yeah, especially when they start getting towards the old, like, past 60, you'll see certain coaches just settle into a position coach and be like, I'm done with the race, but like, I like doing this. Like, we've got Jeff Stoutland, who's just, he doesn't want to be a head coach, but he's just sick of mm. offensive line as well. But, yeah. It's a completely different skill set. Like, you're not just looking yeah. at your position and the fundamentals of the position as a whole. You're looking at the entire unit. 
you know, how are you, how are you going to scheme a game, everything else? You're not just dealing with your particular sort of little group of players. Um, but the, it's it's a hell of a lot more organisation, hell of a lot more man management. You know, it all falls down to you in terms of building a culture and stuff like yeah. that, and um, and the team you build around. Yeah, so it's yeah, it's completely different skill set. And I guess some of these guys who are being given the shot and the opportunity to do it just don't have the skills. Matt Nagy from Gone from the Bears. Probably the most deserved firing on the list. Yeah, that's one that didn't surprise me. Yeah. I was surprised they actually got rid of him. They did because they did Ryan Pace as well, didn't they? Full full clearing. Yeah. He needed to go. Yeah, he only had one good year, didn't he? He was he was head coach, wasn't he, during the double doink? Yeah, the double doink. Yeah. yeah. The classic photo on the sideline, mate. Of course. Of course. But yeah, they just the the bit I'm contrary to your you know am I crazy last year the Bears did make the playoffs last year but they just haven't they haven't been a fun team for God knows how long mm. and exciting team to step into though for a head coach like there are definite holes but I mean if you like Justin Fields you're basically going into a nice fresh quarterback I think they're a fixable team as well like there's they struggle in some areas, but they just all have talent on that roster, and they've shown that they can play against teams when used well and sort of schemed well and come at them when they use the sense and stuff, and they are healthy and everything. So there's there's definitely a, a foundation for for a good team there. Yeah, losing Khalil Mack for the season didn't help them for a start. No. Yeah, he's still an otherworldly player. <laughs> and Montgomery was out for a lot of it, wasn't he? He's another big, big um, playmaker for them on offense. Yeah. Shame they don't have their first round pick. No, yeah, no, they don't. They've lost that to the Giants. That's pretty bad. Uh, Mike Zimmer from the Vikings. Yeah, well, he'd been there for eight years now, but like, this, I swear to God, this year, everything he said, it just like he hated his team. He, he was finished, wasn't he? He did, did do an awful job, uh, but yeah, time was pretty much it. It was just one of those, it ran its course, didn't it? It's just like when you've got a job you, you you don't hate, you're just bored and you're just going through the motions. Because like you didn't do anything wrong. It's not like they were a terrible team. It's just like they were never going to, as it's currently constituted, they're not going to win the Super Bowl. They just need something fresh in there. I mean, he got, he got into a championship. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's not a bad team. So, But it wasn't a surprise. People didn't go, oh, my God, the Vikings are like Mike, Mike Zimmer. It's just so do you think a bit like, yeah, him goes to another coach. team as a head coach or does he step down as to a DC somewhere? Coordinator. Definitely coordinator. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Joe Judge going. I, it happened late, so I thought it wasn't going to happen because it only happened like Wednesday, I think. But yeah, the Giants have cleared, cleared the whole house as well, which is a shame because I enjoyed them being terrible. That's another one, though. That's it. I wouldn't say it surprised me, but I think maybe he could have been given a little bit more slacks. That is a team that has been really banged up with injuries, I guess, and they have sort of mm. they've got this, a, this overlaps know. with one of my top fives. So we'll go into this one a bit more because I've got a, I've got a theory on this. Yeah, I'll, I'll go into that on the top five. But the problem is, is he's one of these harsh coaches, isn't he? And yeah, he's old, you, old school. You have to win. If you're going to be Bill. a bit of a knob, you have to win. And if you don't yeah. win and you're a knob, you're just, just a, a knob. Stick it on yeah. a t-shirt. If you're going to be a bit of a knob, you have to win. Because <laughs> I, I was listening to a podcast today that was talking about his techniques, and he's still doing, if anyone does something wrong, you all do laps. And yeah. you're like, you're telling multi-millionaire athletes that if someone fumbles, everyone's got to do a lap. It's like, eh. Yeah, we'll touch on that one in a bit. And yeah, the very recent one, David Cully. I think this is surprising because he man, we all thought the Texans were getting maybe one win at most. And he what they got like three, four wins. He did a good job. He did a good job, I think. But with a rookie just, quarterback. Yeah. He Davis Mills, he actually got him playing decent football. I think it's harsh, but they clearly want to go in another direction. And if you've got someone in mind, like a Brian Flores, to come in. Then it makes sense. I I think it's a harsh firing, but I think Cully's done himself no harm this year. But he's 
not made an impression because if you asked me week one to 18 to name the Texans coach, I'd probably have struggled. That's <laughs> when true. I just saw the tweet that said David Cully's been fired, I was kind of like, who? Oh, the Texans coach, right? Him. Sorry, David. If you're listening. Yeah, they are a bad team, but the defense has kept them in games and played fairly well at times. I think it's safe to say they're bad, but they're not as bad as everyone expected. And David Mills has been quite a nice little find. And I think with them being in the same division as the Jags, the Jags also made them look not as bad as they actually were. Yeah. It's an interesting division because it has got just such two such bottom. Actually, the Texans only fell out of graces when what when Watson went out. So they are good with him. Um, what who do we think then each team is most likely to pick up as that or who do we yeah who do we think is most likely let's start with the dolphins or to go to the dolphins who do you think they that the coach they go with is i personally think doug peterson's a good match for them because he's a a, mm. a a culture locker room guy and the, the the dolphins are young they need they need someone to keep them together because two i know two is obviously a, a protege and all this but he's only what 24 23 yeah, so, yeah, yeah. If you, if you have the head coach as the as someone who can lead the locker room, which is what I mean, Doug Doug was a great coach. He just fell out of sorts of the Eagles. Sure, it depends. It depends what coordinators are are going to be around to to do stuff. I mean, I still think Eric Bieniemy deserves a shot. I don't, but I think that train is just slowing down each year. Yeah. So I've quickly There's a lot more options this year, here on some random, random website. The favourite for the Dolphins' job, Peterson's the second favourite. The enemy's the third. Favourite is someone called Nathaniel Hackett. Is he the Packers OC? May, yeah, maybe. Yes, he is. He is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. With the Vikings, I know they've they've been getting rumoured um, Kellen Moore from the Cowboys. So I'd love that. but And I think it would suit them. Cause, weirdest thing, though, if that happens, Kirk Cousins and Kellen Moore were drafted in the same year. <laughs> That's so weird. Yeah, we're starting to see a lot. Of, like, Jared Mayo is on, on some miles as well. So you're starting to see players who... Well, at least Tim and Craig might have seen drafted, but he... <laughs> uh, I think you're fine. I didn't just see Kirk Cousins drafted. I was in the room when he was drafted. I was in Radio City Music. Oh, really? That's the cool. The day that he was drafted, I was there. You like that? <laughs> it was great. It was fun. <laughs> um, bears. Who do the Bears get? Anyone. Anyone's an upgrade. Right, so I think they go for a quarterback with like a quarterback whisperer kind of coach. Do you want someone that's going to run a fun offense? Or, not, or at least have the idea of running a fun offense to have a coordinator do it for them? Yeah, and you want to bring like bring back Vic Fangio from the Broncos and just get that that defense hard as nails again. Yeah. Brian Flores is the on this West site is the favorite. Basically, this site's quite lazy. It's got Doug Peterson on number one and number two of every single team. So Doug Peterson. I think it's because he's the most likely because he's taken the year off. He's cleared the bad blood and he's he, he's clearly ready yeah. to go again. But the thing is, there are some decent markets like available. Like head coaches would like to go. Like Chicago is a massive one. New York Giants is a massive one. You got Vegas, yeah. which is another. You, you say that right. Interesting fact I come across with the Giants as well, because I feel like it's a place where you could it's not going to be difficult to not do well, is the Giants at no point at any time in the last five years have had a winning record. Yeah, they're just a, they're not a good Mental. team. Right now. Mm. Which Mental. surprised me, yeah, because I don't they don't seem like they're that bad of a team, but for them to not even have a winning record in the last five years. Like oh, they've been like one of the worst teams in the last few years. Uh, but they they have got rid of their dog shit GM. Uh, what's his name? Gettleman. Yeah, like yeah. he was, like he was awful. <laughs> like he, he had some true misses <laughs> in the draft. Another interesting fact that came across, which it just made me giggle to be honest. Um, the playoff, the Bengals' last playoff win was in '91. Now, text messages didn't come about until 1992. 
So no one has ever sent a text message about the Bengals winning a playoff game in in history. I, I don't know. I just <coughs> random fact, a bit stupid, but it made me laugh. Yeah, so let's, who, who, is, is Jim Harbaugh getting linked to the Raiders, the biggest one right now? Yeah, I think so. I think he's got, he, he used to be, he was a coach back in the day. I think he was a QB coach way back when. Uh, and it's a good job to have. Uh, but it is going to be funny that we've got a coach that took us into the playoffs with everything that's happened in Vegas this year. And he kind of knows that he's not getting that job and hasn't got a chance. So I feel sorry for him, but yeah, they're going to go. They want a bigger coach because they're in Vegas, you know. Just built your. You just built the largest bookies in America outside your stadium. Mm-hmm. Love the L, but that's going to be around for four games. That would be a fun day, though. Like, imagine yeah. just like, like, dude, so instead of just going somewhere and getting blood, like, let's just go to a game and put some ridiculous bets on. <laughs> Sounds like a good day. Um, the Jags. You get Trevor Lawrence, who can we just say, his last game, what a blinder. He he, he yeah. looked like a first the first overall pick in that game. Finally. Yeah. But the Jags are a weird one. It's just one of those places that you just feel it's cursed. And see, Shad Khan runs it. The, you know what the fans think about the... About the, the, team, the old clowns. Yeah, coming out to, to be there. I don't know. It's, it seems like a weird place to go, but you are with one of the most talented, the claim to be one of the most talented quarterbacks that has ever come from. And you get the first round pick. Exactly. Yeah. They, they, there's that appeal of on the pitch stuff, but it's the off the pitch stuff that comes with it that is the, the part where people might turn away. Yeah, I think they've got the first round pick, and I think they're in the lucky position that they're not going to have to worry about whether to take another quarterback or not. It's not like the number one, there's a glaring super quarterback. It's all position players rather than quarterbacks this year. So that actually is in their favor in some ways because they don't have to worry about whether they're keeping Trevor and trading him and doing a Kyler Murray and Josh Rosen. Where do you think to go then with that number one pick? It's going to be one of the two pass rushers, I think. You're not going to take Evan Neal, the tackle. I was thinking offensive tackle would, would maybe, but if you've got the talent at the very top yeah. of the pass rushes, it's hard to say. Their defense is already very good. I think if you've got the number one overall pick, you just go for the best player available. If it's it seems like the top two is, is Evan Neal or yeah. uh, Fibida. And, so, the, and the guy from Michigan. Michigan Hutchinson's too. dropping a little bit because of his, his playoff performance. It's one of those years, I don't know, I might be wrong because I don't watch that much college football, but it feels like any year where there's not quarterbacks being really hyped at the top of the draft, it feels like it's going to be a bit of a boring draft. But, you know, all these other players might be shit hot and might be brilliant. I'm looking forward to this draft because there isn't a lot of quarterbacks, that, which, like, when the first five out of the top ten are all quarterbacks, it's just like, okay, well, I've known which quarterback's going to get picked where for the past three months because everyone's been talking about it. This I way it feels a lot more sporadic. That all of a sudden, in the next few months, one or two of the quarterbacks are going to be, actually, they're brilliant, and there's going to be a quarterback taken in, I reckon, top five at least. Bryce Young will end up going top five. Bryce Young's not in this year. He's not Is he yet. not? No, no, he'll be number one overall. I yeah, he's next year, he's a junior. I thought he was ready to go in. That's interesting. Yeah. No, yeah, that's why there's not a number one overall consensus, because the minute Bryce Young comes out, yeah, he's yeah. the number one. Yeah. Um, any other teams we've missed? Yeah, New York's a shitty destination. Texans, you get the question mark of the Sean Watson. So do we think then Flores, if he wanted the Sean Watson rather than two or overall, would just go to the Texans? And then he's got the quarterback you always want. I don't know if he's safe though. Like, I don't know. Yeah. The Texans are a bit of a mess, aren't they? Mm. Like, do you really want to go somewhere that's like a bit like we were saying before with the Jags? Like, do you really want to go somewhere that's that much of Un, you know, unstable, I guess, at the moment. It's true, but then Flores, Casario is an expat guy. Flores is an expat guy. There's a chance of that, that link up, especially if he likes to, to Sean Watson. If to Sean Watson, whatever happens there, if he ends up being able to play football, I think that fit does make sense. I don't know how Texans fans would, would go on that because I know they don't really want to go through the whole like ex bill people, but well, you know, it's. Um, I think it would be a good hire for them and it would push them on. 
is it right there are currently no ex uh, Bill assistants as head coaches now? They've all been fired. <laughs> They've all been right? sacked. Yeah. It is a bit uh, Vrabel because what's his name from yeah. Mike Vrabel yeah. is a Bill assist like a Bill um whatever the word is, but he just wasn't an assistant for him. Yeah. Um, but we haven't talked about the Broncos. Um, I mean, you get to you actually get to with that, if you exclude the quarterback position, you get to go into a loaded team. But that's their one thing; they just not have that quarterback that they need. They're also getting new ownership as well. Oh yeah, Elway and Manning are fighting over it, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, you'd love Payne Manning to own your team, wouldn't you? You'd just okay. be so happy. You just want to get John Elway as far away as you can from <laughs> yeah. the quarterback decision in that because that's just you are doing the exact same thing though. It's like, oh, we using our last great quarterback as an owner wasn't successful. Let's do it again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so just just get a decent quarterback. I actually feel sorry for Denver now because if you look at the quarterbacks they've had, it's horrendous. And the, oh, the thing is, they 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 passed on they passed on Justin Fields. This year, yeah. just gone. Yeah, they, they picked they? up Satan instead. Yeah, they they had a chance. To do it. That's at some point you got to stop feeling sorry for them because they they have had the opportunities. Mm-hmm. Justin Fields hasn't proved he's a guy though. Yeah. No, 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 he hasn't. But you still and feel Pat a lot Satan more optimistic. Good. He's Pat better Satan. than Drew Locke. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. In a running race, I'm not too sure anymore. <laughs> um, moving away from head coaches, this is news in the sense that it's a headline, but it will talking about playoffs the Colts and the Chargers missed the playoffs two teams that I think we both agreed about making it on the the tough seedings but got both two just shocking shocking departures yeah, the um, Colts really shit the bed, didn't they? <laughs> Life. they could have got in last week if they beat us yeah the Colts had two win in ga- win and in games they lose to the Raiders in that nail biter and then they just get battered by Trevor Lawrence. Like, yeah. who hasn't battered anyone all season? Like, it was a bad game. <laughs> I think what my high blood pressure weekend started on that Sunday because I was like, there's no way those two things are going to happen. Because if, if uh, the Jags beat the Colts and the Ravens beat the Steelers, if both those things happened, we were in, regardless of what happened in the next day. And I was like, there's no way the Colts are going to going to lose and then they got absolutely battered so I was like I was the biggest Ravens fan for about an hour I was like oh come on it's only Big Ben please and then I, I don't have to stay up oh yeah that, so that the Colts yeah Colts Jags is followed by Steelers Ravens and that was just pure tenseness because it was obviously mm-hmm. Ben's potential last game yep. uh, you get a classic a- AFC North rivalry game which are always brutal to watch TJ Watt loses the he he had one sack over, but it was called a tackle, which I, I I'm really happy he didn't break the record just because I'm spiteful. Well, um, there's talk that they're reviewing that now. It was a tackle though. The, the guy the quarterback had turned into a runner. Did you see Michael Strahan's record breaking sack when he got the record? Was it Favre giving it to him? Yeah, Favre fell down so he could get the sack to get the record. Um, and then, yeah, obviously, Tim staying up till 5 45 in the morning to watch the Chargers fail to draw. Mm-hmm. It was a great Again. fun weekend, though. No, like, so it just, it's just saying, like, in terms of games and stuff, yeah, like, it was a great, a really good weekend of football overall. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you Tim. what, though, I'm, I'm glad the Raiders kicked that ball because I, you know, I was watching the Hollis Band, I've seen the result beforehand, but part of you is like, is the integrity of the game just going to, like, of competition just going to be completely wiped out here for the Raiders? Just let it go so, and a draw, but I'm so glad they did. I'm going to go on, go into this, but it was a case of we we were going to give them the game. We were going to give them the playoff spot because we just ran three times and we're just running the clock down before we snapped it. And then they called the timeout, and I think that then went, oh, fuck them then. <laughs> we, we, we've offered them the game, so... If they don't want to do that, then we'll just go down and score. And they did. But it wasn't – that's the good thing about having a good kicker. It wasn't yeah. – it was like a 50-odd-yard kick to, to do it. But that was so nice. I was like, right, the only thing that could go wrong here is if this kick is blocked and returned and we lose. 
because if we draw could you imagine i know (laughs) Uh, although everything like that was going through my head i had so much going through my head at the time working out right put someone back put someone back so if it's picked up i was like but if we miss it we're in and if we score it we're in so that's the only thing that can happen is a block of return yeah, but you, I mean, to, you you get. A, I think if you tied, you'd have to play the Chiefs, and now you play the Bengals. So yeah, yeah. there was an advantage to winning as yeah, well. So I think yeah, you'd rather play the true. Bengals. Uh, oh God, point. yeah. Consider we've been beaten like 84-14, I think, <laughs> aggregate without the Chiefs this season. So. And then, of course, for the NFC side, the 49ers and the I wonder who the Cardinals was in there anyway, but 49ers and Eagles in the playoffs, which it, I think we're. It's nice and competitive up in the playoffs now. The only real dead team feels like to the Steelers, and you can never really count Ben out. It must be so, nice as an Eagles fan, though, because everyone, including all three people here, counted them out. I, I, I said Adam, Adam, 14 and mm-hmm. three, I think. Yeah, so. Adam, Adam was the very opposite end. <laughs> <laughs> well, to show yeah, you how competitive it's been between the teams, like I've come across a post the day that showed you the... It's all the teams that are in the playoff. It's their records against teams that have a winning record. And then you've got like you've got other than like the Titans who are eight and three against teams with a winning record. You've got like Chiefs seven and four. But then like as you go down the list, you've got like Cowboys are only five and four, Bills are only five and five, 49ers are four and five, uh, Steelers are two and six, Eagles are one and seven, Rams are three and five. You know, you it just shows you how like all over the place, I guess, this season's been and how much everyone yeah. just beat each other up. Like so Adam, you had the Eagles at eleven and six in your preseason. Oh, that's uh, pretty close. Craig four and thirteen. Joe three and fourteen. And I was three and fourteen as well. So it's pretty. And we good made the playoffs, team. and we. I think we've got a chance. I like. I'm just happy we're in the playoffs. I'm happy we're playing meaningful yep. football, and we have three draft picks in the first round. Yeah. Oh, and when and when to have you seen the comments the Chris Ballard made? He was like. And I'm paraphrasing, it was like, at the time, we thought it was a good signing. Uh, and it was like, we're just going to try and do the, the, the best with the players that we have and the, the deals that we make. And it's like, holy shit, you know Wenz has got low confidence anyway. And you just gut-punched him. Yeah, that's tough. I mean, it's a dream situation for the Eagles. He got all yeah. the way to getting the play snap, the snap count right. And then he crumbled and lost the playoff spot for him. I think it's a, getting the books as well as a sort of, I wouldn't say favourable matchup, but I think it's one of the better teams she could be paired up against. Yeah, I'd, I'd hate to play the, 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 the oh, Packers have got the buy on there. I'd hate to play yeah. the, the Rams or I don't want to play the Cowboys. That's the team I'm, I want to avoid in the playoffs. Really? Because I think they, they beat our team the best. Like every other team, they have a weakness that we can, I mean, the running game usually just beats them, but the Cowboys just, their, their receivers just, beat us every time. Like, we can't get over their receivers. That was going to be my next question. And in, in there to win this game, I don't think it's necessarily Gronk that's going to be your biggest issue. I think it's going to be Mike Evans. Like, what? How do you stop Mike Evans? Mike Evans struggles with one-on-one. Like, when he's against an elite corner, that's when he struggles. And we've got Slay, who I trust. Okay. All right, Slay. I'm, I'm, it's, the, it's, the, it's the most comfortable team I'm happy playing. Because I don't want to play. Who, who are the options? It could be Rams or. Um, it's just those three, isn't it? It's Rams or friends. Cowboys. Yeah, I'm happy. Yeah, Rams. I would have played as well, but yeah, I wanted to avoid the Cowboys, who are playing 49ers, which is a very retro game. Mm-hmm. Uh, Scotty Miller's a player you got to look out for. Little fast one over the top. Yeah, they're, 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 I'm really. Not, I think they got Levante David back for their linebackers, and if he was out, I was com- I was confident we could win a one game. But yeah, we'll see. The Tim, spread's interesting. You, Sorry, Tim, how do you feel about playing the the Bengals? I'd rather play them than the Chiefs. Um, we match up quite well with them because the Bengals' weakness is their offensive line. Our strength is our defensive line. So if we can get, it's well it. I've always said to Simon, the whole of the season, we're either going to lose by 30 or win by one, which is what's happened most of the season. But I'm, I'm not optimistic. I'm never optimistic, but I'm not pessimistic, put it that way. So You just said, 
the strength is our defensive line. I don't think I've ever heard you compliment your team. You know, <laughs> I'm I'm all in on Derek Carr now. I've decided. It's like PFF, Football Outsiders, any matrix you want to use, what you can't measure is leadership. And I think with everything that's happened to that team, all the players and coaches that they've lost, and everything that's gone on, the fact that he's kept that team together, and we won four out of five, four. Yeah, four games on the bounce to get into the playoffs says a lot about the leadership of the team. And Joe, you've got to go to Buffalo, play the Bills again. Yeah, I mean, we won there, uh, what, six weeks ago, wherever it was. Uh, however, the weather was insane and we just we just went run against run and we're always going to win that if we do that. Uh, I'm not confident at all. I, I don't think we're going to win. I don't think we're going to get close either. I think it's going to be a good 10, 12 point win for the Bills. I just think they're better all around team. Josh Allen is already giving me nightmares. Like I'm not being funny. I fucking hate him. Not not that I think he's a lovely guy. Um, but oh god, he just he just pissed me off. Yeah, but you see that that sounds. If you look at my bold prediction for this week, I disagree. I think this is going to be a very close game. I've, I. I think the Bills are going to win. Don't get me wrong, okay? Like, pass it in with a shout. That's, but I I think it's going to be closer than you think. Yeah. I'd say, I'd say we've got about a 20% chance of winning. That That's kind of what I would say. Um, saying there's a chance. Yeah, there is a chance. There is a chance. But I don't know. It just, I, but then it's us. It's playoffs. I, it depends what game plan we go for. Max been a bit iffy. He, he was fantastic yeah, against the Jags, but that's the Jags. But last your, week, he... your strength is the old line and your run game. If you just run the ball and beat yeah. them with your old line and win that battle in the trenches and keep the ball out of Josh Allen's hand and keep their yeah. offense off the field, I think you will be fine. And you'll chew the clock down, and it will even if you do go behind, it will stop you going drastically behind. It will keep you in it. I think until the end, and then keep the pressure on. Like I think this could be quite a. I think. Low scoring but exciting game. Yeah, the thing is though, we we, we got Isaiah Win and Christian Barmore injured last game, which are two. Christian like, Barmore's not injured. He said he's not. Is he, is he fine now? Because I knew he I knew that at first he basically got straight carted off, and then he ended up. Um, they said the scan was actually better than they thought. Yeah, it's negative. Because he's been our he's probably been our best defensive player this year. Him and J C Jackson together. So. Yeah, it just depends. It just depends what Patriots turns up. I think the Bills, are, you know what you're going to get with them, and we just need to be ready. Um, yeah, we just if Josh Allen runs for like 50 yards, I'm going to lose my head because he will. It's always exciting to see a divisional rivalry in the playoffs. I hate it. I think, if it's your team, it's the worst. But watching them from the outside is great. Give me any anyone else in the AFC, anyone else. Well, I, I don't care. Cowboys, mate. <laughs> Third time this season as well, like, and they've yeah, all been good. Yeah, they've all been good games. So, I'm and it's one all. Yeah, That's it's one all. This is the finisher. Yeah. Oh God. Right. We'll talk about the playoff games in a bit. Um, actually, we're not because this bit of news also relates about Ash Week 18 game. I mean, I think this is also going to be one of one of your points. But Brandon Staley has made the worst coaching decision of all time. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get, go back to that. In a we'll minute. go back to that. Okay. <laughs> Well, uh, well, Tony O'Brown, we haven't touched on. Oh that. yeah, we we'll, we'll, we'll we'll have like, that one too. Yeah, well, like, <laughs> I think he's done the whole five already. Are you doing biggest controversies? I'm doing worst decisions. Uh, I'm sure I've seen him jogging, jogging past my house with his top off before. He's still going. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised me that this far without anybody mentioning it. To be honest. <laughs> yeah, you see, he was at a thing I think last night with Kanye West. Um, I think Jamie Foxx was there. They were just on a sofa with a load of women just at some sort of party. And it, AB is just, he's just going for it now, I think. It, and it sounds awful and shocked me if he was dead in five years because he seems to just, he's going at the absolute top of his of his life. He's going at 100 miles an hour and no one seems to be able to stop him in anything. Yeah, he's an interesting fella. <laughs> okay, if Tim's got in his list, we'll show that again in a bit. <laughs> Um, yeah, I've got one injury that I think is playoff related, but I can't think really think of anything else. Um, Michael Gallup tore his ACL uh, against us, so that's it's it, obviously he is the third receiver for the Cowboys, but he's been very reliable for them, so it does weaken them somewhat. 
Uh, JJ Watt, I know, is potentially coming back to play, which is big. What about um, Peacock? Doesn't need to back soon. Isn't who? Hopkins, DeAndre Hopkins. I think he was ruled out for the season. He's ruled out completely. Okay. I don't think there's rumors that he could potentially make it back. Um, who else has come? Cam Akers came back for the Rams. That was good for them. That's crazy. The fact that he's even yeah. back on the field. Yeah. He tore his Achilles. Can't think of any other major injuries though. Let's see JJ Watts back. Yeah. And that happened during the break. Yeah. Right. We're on to our main event. Top fives. So we have all prepared a top five list of something. Could be anything about this season. Who wants to go first? I'll do because we've done most of mine already. <laughs> so the first one I've got for the worst decision is Antonio Brown deciding to walk off the field and strip on his way around while waving and dancing on the field and then afterwards saying that he was too injured to play. Seemed to be doing just fine when he was dancing off the bench. Um, it's no surprise. He's done it everywhere he's been. There's nowhere he's done, gone. Thanks for your time, Antonio. Lovely to see you. Keep in touch, my friend. He's been kicked out the door everywhere he's stopped so far. So. Thank you for yeah. the memes, though. Thank you for the memes. That dance in the end zone created some pretty Did funny he... pictures that amused me. Thank you. He went on like a radio show or a podcast show afterwards, and he like it was just bitching and running about his team. And then like a day later another quote came out and he was like, yeah, I probably could have acted a little bit not like, let more toned down. And it's just such a piss that like, he's clear looks at it and going like, maybe that was a bit much. <laughs> but that's what he always does. That he, He'll go off on one and think the very next day if he says, oh, I didn't mean that. I apologise. I overreacted. But it'll all... I'm done with him. I really am. <laughs> Is he ever going to play in the NFL again? Surely not. Probably. Yeah, oh, yeah, he's allowed he's to play. play. That's the thing. He, he he is he's the he's a top ten receiver. That's yeah. the thing. He also he it, it it's a lot of attention for your team, I guess. Even though it's uh, any press is good press, I guess. Like if someone's desperate enough, I don't see why he wouldn't. But if he's failed in the Patriots, he's failed in the Bucks, which are two of the probably. The, if you're going to succeed, you're going to succeed there. And like yeah. you've got a really strict coach and a really a not very strict coach, and he's not working either of those systems. You know, can you imagine you went to somewhere, I don't know, with a bad coach and absolutely destroyed the locker room and totally destroyed the team? But on the serious point, I truly think he's got serious mental health problems. Yeah. Because um, he's just not right. No, I think he's just a dickhead. Yeah. No, I think that's that. part of it, but I think the it's just the the how like irrational and sort of impulsive he is that I think that's where his problems are. You know what? Fair play to Mike Tomlin, keeping it keeping him under wraps for however many years. Oh god, yeah, yeah. So that's my first one. The second one again, because I love it so much, I'm going to talk about it again. Brandon Staley taking a timeout when his team could have made the playoffs. It's not even just a game-changing... It, it's the playoffs. He's, he's screwed his team completely for no apparent reason. I can see no... I, I'd love someone to suggest a reason why he did it, because I don't see any reason why he did that. There were, I think it was 40 seconds left on the clock. So oh, it wasn't like, it was because his defence wasn't in position, so he had to call it so he could readjust, but then... He he also failed to stop the run like two more times. Yeah. But the, the Raiders weren't trying to score with the run. They were, they were just running the clock down. They were letting the clock run down. It wasn't like we were going to score. If the game ends in a tie, you're in the playoffs. Just let... It's just a mind-boggling decision. <laughs> Boggles the mind. So yeah. the next one goes back to Big Joe Judge. Now, here's what I think. I'm sure I read last week that they were going to keep Joe Judge as head coach. Even though some of his press conferences were truly bizarre. But when the third and nine inside his own half, I think it was like on the 20-yard line, he runs a quarterback sneak on third and nine. I think the owners up in the box went, nah, that's it. Do you know what the play <laughs> before it was? Sorry? Do you know what the play before it was? No. It was a quarterback sneak on second and 11. You, you, 
that sealed his fate. That's the worst decision. I think he wanted out, and he was like, right, I'm not even what going to do it. I'll, the I'll thing is, he criticised the Eagles at the end of the season before, saying, yeah. like, if you're not playing to win, uh, you're dishonouring the game. And then he's just done quarterback sneak twice in a row and it's like five-yard line. I know you don't your third-string quarterback, but bloody hell, come on. Right, the next one. I'm, I'm not going to blow my own trumpet, but... Uh, Urban Meyer taking the job in the first place was the worst decision that man's ever made. That was never going to work out. He made a lot of bad decisions while he was there, but just taking that job, it never works. He Big, lasted longer than I thought, to be honest. Yeah, he did last longer than I thought, but it's never worked. Big college coaches like him who think they can run the whole thing and it's going to be like running uh, Florida or Ohio State. It just doesn't work out. And some of the stuff he did along the way. You can get away with it. I've listened to so many podcasts and read about if you're the number one guy in a college program, that town adores you. So they'll let you get away with going to a bar and chatting up a girl. That'll all be covered up because the college team runs that town. They run the media. But when it's the NFL and it's the national media, if you go to a bar, you're going to be seen. You're quite recognizable. You're Urban Meyer. That's going to get found out. So, yeah, that was a bad decision. And my last one is trading for Carson Wentz. Yes. That has completely screwed the Colts. The Colts have lost draft picks. They didn't make it to the playoffs. Unbelievable. That, though, could easily have been uh, Matthew Stafford if the Rams hadn't got the playoffs. It was close to a perfect situation for the Eagles because, like, what you wanted was when's the play most of snaps, but you want them to be really bad. Yeah. And it did start that they lost, like, the first, what, four games? Yeah. And Gwen's played every snap, so it was looking great. Then they went on a massive win streak with Jonathan Taylor going MVP mode. And I was like, oh, okay, it's fine. Went's played his snaps. But then they just tail, but whatever the mm-hmm. saying is when you're crashing burnout. And uh, yeah, we get uh, a, what 16th overall pick. And they get stuck with a broken quarterback. I don't think I've watched that much Carson Wentz in the past because obviously he was in the NFC, but he would terrify me. If he was my quarterback. The number of times he does little like, little basketball mm-hmm. throws or underarms it, and you're like, what are you doing? Yeah, and Frank Reich has very much hitched his wagon to Wentz as well. So mm-hmm. there's some I that was a firing Reich, but like there's some disturbances yeah. and rumors coming out of there. He's gonna be on a sugarly peg, as they say in Scotland. A what? A sugary peg. Sugarly peg, a loose peg, like a short, like a short chest. rope, yeah, short leash, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, Joe. Since you are next to Tim on my camera, do you want to go next? Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I've got the top five most destructive losses. Okay, and I've got them from five to one. This is a mixture of kind of not to take too much away from Craig's like shocks, but also results that just would just awful and created an absolute madness of a season. So at number five, I've got the Lions beating the Vikings in week 13, 29, 27. Um, I think we remember this one. It was, I believe it was in regular time. Jared Goff went down the, the pitch and there was some horrendous defense by the, by the Vikings. They were sat right at the back of the end zone. Jared Goff just, quick tight throw can't remember who caught it but I just remember Dan Campbell and Jared Goff just run and hug and go mental destructive for the Vikings I mean they had only beaten the Packers two weeks ago people were thinking that they were going to be on this march now they'd sort themselves out they're going to go to the playoffs they'd only lost really close games before that and this just showed that they were not to play offside so yeah that was pretty much the start of the end of the Vikings season I've got week nine, uh, the Jags beating the Bills. Not too destructive uh, for a season, uh, but it was in an area which kind of cost the Bills a lot. The, the Bills went two and four in their next six after this, um, before they won their last four games. And I think this loss started off the reason why they didn't end up getting a number one seed in the AFC. Uh, if they hadn't lost this, I don't think they would have lost a lot of confidence, which led them to lose to the Patriots and other teams. And yeah, I thought that was a, a bad one. Number three, I don't know if you guys remember this one. It was week two when Washington beat the Giants 30 to 29. 
this was a game which which Danny Jones had a decent game. Um, he played pretty well. However, the Giants must have got about, I remember watching this one, I'm recording it, about 15 penalties, including Washington had a game-winning kick to win the game. One of the Giants players went offside. The Washington kicker missed the kick, so they bought it back, and then Washington kicked the game-winning kick and won the game. So, and that just that just stinks of the Giants and Joe Judge for me. That was that was awful. Number two, uh, a quite an under the radar one. It didn't seem so bad at the time, but I've got the Rams beating the Cardinals in Week 14, 30 to 23. So the Cardinals were 10 and two going into this. They had the joint best. I think they might have had the best record in the NFL, if not the joint best record, because I think they might have lost to the Packers the week after. I can't remember exactly, or they might have already lost to them. But including this game, they went. This was the first of their last five games. They went one and four at the end of the season. They ended up losing, obviously, of course, the division to the Rams as well. And yeah, they lost to the Lions, Colts, and Hawks after this. Three non-playoff teams. So that just shows the just the big hit it had on their their confidence. And number one, it's the Jags beating the Colts. You know, the Jags go into the stadium full of clowns. So the Colts going to stay in full of clowns. All they had to do was beat the worst team in football to make the playoffs. And they couldn't. They couldn't even get close. Um, so, yeah, they're the, the top five most attractive losses of the 2021 regular season. Okay. Yeah, I think that Jags Colts one is going to resonate for years to come. People are going to look back at that game as one of the, the weirdest games of the last 20 yeah. years. It'll be like yeah, one they of those. They were so dominant. It'll be like one of the boogeyman games. You know, it goes down in the annals of your team's history, like the butt fumble for the Jets, and you'll have the clown game for the Colts. <laughs> um, Craig, what's your top? Well, do you want to see if you match up with any of yours? Oh no, they're fine. So I've got um, I've gone for the five NFL's biggest shock victories of this season. Um, so I've gone, I've gone in reverse order. Um, so. For me, the fifth one, um, I had the Chargers beating the Chiefs in week three. Um, the Chiefs, they had lost literally by one point to the Ravens the week before in week two. I think everyone thought that Kansas City, even though they had lost that shocker, would have going to come back with a vengeance. And Mahomes doesn't usually lose two back to back and he was going to put a bit of a beating on the Chargers. Um, however, that wasn't the case. Justin Herbert came out in the Chargers and they went 14 3 ahead. Um, and even though it was at Harrow, at, at Arrowhead as well. I remember we all had the Chiefs winning this one quite heavily in our predictions and it didn't turn out to be the case. Um, but even after going down in that lead, the Chiefs did fight hard to come back. That wasn't to be. Mike Williams scored the, the third touchdown and ended up taking the game for them in the end, 30-24. to 24. Um, Number four on my list, I've got the Washington football team beating the Tampa Bay Bucks in week 10, 29-19. Yeah. Um, I think upset by the by the Saints in the Superdome a week before the Bucks, they, they just it was too shocking defeat. Um, they just didn't look the same, um, and he came up short against against Washington. Um, yeah, I mean I don't know if, what else to say about that. I don't think anybody's seen that coming. It was a pretty no, big absolutely. upset. Yeah, um, I, it didn't seem to impact the Bucks in a big way in the end, but you know it's, I guess it was a, a highlight for the Washington for the Washington season. Um, third on my list, I've got the Ravens beating the Cowboys, 36-33, um, in what was a really good game back in 12. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was. It was Thanksgiving. Now, I love that two game. Play, it's two playoff teams, and if you'd have just given me them and just said these two teams were playing, like I wouldn't have put the Raiders out of it. It was the fact that the Raiders were coming into this game um, after, I think it was three straight defeats they just had. Yeah. Like they were looking like they were in a bit of a spiral, a bit of a slump. Things weren't looking good. Dallas were looking hot. I think they were about like seven and three or something at the time. And um, they looked like they were firing all cylinders. And then the Raiders came out and just looked like a totally different team. I think they were like 27 to 20 up or 19, something like that yeah. around at the time. I think I made on my notes. Um, and they'd be held on. They ended up kicking that, that field goal right at the end and, and taking that one 30 to 30. It was a good game, that one. Um, second on my list. I've got the Lions beating the Cardinals 30 to 12. Um, I mean, I think I don't even think I have to explain that one. You know, you've got the Cardinals, who were the number one seed, I think, at the time, or and going up against one of the worst teams in the NFL. Like, I, 
you know, you don't even have to go into, into specifics for that one. I think the, the scoreline and the two teams say it all. Um, and then finally, for, at number one, I've got the Texans beating the Chargers 41 to 29. Now, this is a team that's not only good at high, you know, a high scoring team, but they, they, they pride themselves on the defense, the Chargers. So, for someone like the Texans, who were arguably the worst team or one of the two worst teams in football to come out and to take on the Chargers like that, um, I thought it was crazy. So, that was my number one on my list. Um, I don't know if you disagree with any of them or if there's any games I've yep. missed that you thought could have maybe made that list. Yeah, that Washington one resonates because they, they kind of were like, actually, we could go for the playoffs now. But then, yeah, they obviously got b- battered back down a bit because they struggled to keep that momentum. In fact, that Chargers game is even more important because if they had won that game, they would have been in the playoffs. Yeah. Okay, my top five. I've gone a little bit away from active things that happened. I've gone with the top five draft picks looking backwards. Okay. Uh, I've tried to consider how late they were drafted as a, a bonus. So I had to, it's a very rough estimate of like what their stats look like to where yeah. they were drafted. Uh, and I'll go in reverse order like Craig. So number five for me, I shall go with my honourable mentions and I'll give them afterwards. Number five, I've got the Lions wide receiver, Amon Ra St. Brown. Uh, he was a fourth round pick. So that's pretty good for where they got him. Uh, his stat line was 119 targets, 90 catches, 912 yards, five uh, five touchdowns, and one rushing touchdown. But I, if you if you watched any of the Lions games, he was their wide receiver one. He 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 made so many clutch plays. He made that catch against the Vikings to win the game, uh, especially towards the end of the season. He looked really good. Um, and yet, for a fourth round receiver, I, I reckon he's going to be one of those stories like. Oh yeah, they picked Amon Ra St. Brown up in the fourth round. What's uh, like three years later is going to be absolutely incredible. Uh, fourth overall, I put Creed Humphrey, the center for the mm-hmm. Chiefs. Uh, second round, uh, I didn't write the exact pick, but he's pretty much been the top center along with Jason Kelsey. But when you consider Jason Kelsey's a 33-year-old veteran and Creed Humphrey's a, a, fir- a first-year rookie, in an offensive line that's brand new as well. There's there was no uh, carryover from the previous year. Like he's just been phenomenal. His stat line, uh, he's only had six penalties. He's only allowed one sack. Like that's pretty pretty phenomenal. That's pretty good. Uh, third overall, Chiefs again. Trey Smith, guard from the sixth round. He was the two hundred twenty sixth pick overall. He started every single game for them as offensive guard. He's allowed four sacks and only had nine penalties. So this was one where I considered they picked him up late. He is a yeah. rookie and he's been damn consistent. Uh, I mean, you could what four, if you're allowed four sacks, you want maybe a, a top twenty guard, and to get that kind of value on a rookie contract in the sixth round is is just great. Number two, hate to give it to him, but the Cowboys picking Mika Parsons. He's just an animal. And I remember saying this like this time last year, saying I want to get Mika Parsons, but he has just truly been unreal. He's, I don't think he's going to get a defensive player of the year, but the fact he's getting in the conversation as a rookie is phenomenal. Mm. Um, obviously, he's been, played most of the season on the edge, even though he is a linebacker, you know, just because the Cowboys have been injured. Uh, but he's had three forced fumbles, 13 sacks, uh, three passes deflected, and he's basically been playing off the edge the entire season. Uh, and 30 quarterback hits. I read those 13 sacks are the, the most uh, uh, most in the first 13 games, uh, along with, like, I think it was, like, fourth to, like, Reggie White um, and two other legends. I can't remember the other ones, to be honest. Uh, and my first overall pick, I think we know who it's going to be, is Jamar Chase for the Bengals, because he is just fucking awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, he could get offensive player of the year, probably not, just because mm. Super Cup's had an unreal season as well, but I mean, you've got a rookie who's uh, got 81 catches, 1,455 yards. I think he beat Randy Moss's record for it. Uh, he beat the, the franchise record, which was Ocho Cinco's. Uh, he got 13 touchdowns. I mean, the past couple of games, he's literally been killing teams by himself with Burrow. Um, like, I think it was the Ravens where he's killed him a bit as well. Uh, but yeah, even though he was, what, the uh, fifth overall pick, I think he's just 
he's just going to be an absolute dog for the next couple of years. I think someone who I'd like to mention in terms of rookies, he's been big for us, was Adafi, Adafi Owe on the edge. Um, yeah, he's been great on the path for us to consider he's just stepped in. Like, I think he's on like five or six sacks. He's had a fumble recovery. He's always getting pressured on the QB. Like, he's been the guy who's just stepped in. I don't think he's expecting a huge amount from him. He got um, the Mahomes fumble, didn't he? Yeah, he's been one of the most clutch players on that, that defensive line this year. So it's nice to see. Oh, yeah, my honorable mentions. Uh, I've got Mac Jones, 15th overall pick. He's just like, he's as a rookie, he's, yeah, he's not blown the doors off anyone, but he's just been consistent and good and he's getting wins because that's all he needs to do. Um, 67.6% completion ratio as a rookie. Uh, 3,801 yards. He doesn't need to throw that much. He threw three times in one game. Uh, 22 touchdowns to 13 interceptions. It's not the best, but he's a rookie. Yeah, he's a rookie, isn't he? It's not bad. Um, and yeah, like if a Q- QBR, if you don't know, it's zero to 100. If you're perfect, you're 100. If you're Carson Wentz, you're 4.4. Um, it's true. Uh, but yeah, he got 51.3 QBR, so he's he's over average, but it's that's good for a rookie. You want him to have that good level to then build on. Uh, and my other honorable mention is Rashawn Slater. Uh, the tackle for the Chargers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Six penalties allowed, four sacks. He started as left tackle the entire season. Like, Penny Sewell, he's great, but he was a fourth overall pick to a 15th, or 13th, sorry. And yeah, Rashawn Slate is going to be yeah. a, an anchor on that line for years to come. He was a top, top pick. Like, one of the most valuable ones in that draft, easily. Ones I crossed out because I did the be... they didn't work out was Elijah Moore for the Jets and Davis Mills for the Texans, but they weren't actually that impressive. What are you going to say, Tim? For me, mainly because of his name, Divine Diablo. Best name, Drach, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's a safety someone... converted to linebacker, but he's been yeah. bloody good. The last four games, he's had like 45 tackles, a pass deflected, and a recovered fumble as well. So he's, he's going to be good. He can tackle, really can. There's a player in the college... His whose last name is Kool Aid. That is like actually like, like all spelled that like, way. Like spelled K O O L A I D. Like it's, it just gets better and better. It's just becoming that Key and Peel sketch. It's all these like computer game regen names that are just coming out. Right? Do we? we, we no one's not, ever going to beat the quarterback called Chuck Long. <laughs> what was that? Greatest Chuck quarterback of all time. There was that kicker called Chris Blewett. <laughs> um, let's should we? Oh, should we? Have we got time to go through all the predictions, or can we just give our scores for each game at least? Uh, we can do predictions. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, how are we doing score wise? We've not, not for the full season a bit. Right. Let's have a look. In two seconds. So we need to do our pre. We need to add preseason in at some point. Our preseason predictions in at some point, don't we? Yeah. And what were we doing by our rules? It was like one point for a correct seed. Was it? I don't even remember. I don't remember. I think we just did wild. How many teams you guess would be in the wild card round? Yeah. And then division. I think that'll take up a whole pod in itself, doing that, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we'll just we'll just add the, the preseason points on after yeah. this. Yeah. Right. Should we just take it from the scores for the predictions? From regular oh. season, yeah. Okay. So from the regular season at the moment, there's two ties. Tie at the top, tie at the bottom. So Craig and Joe have currently got 197 points. They're both in the lead. And then me and Adam have got 191 points. Still so, close. Points. Still close. Very close. No seasons where the points are. Yep. Although, have you? I don't. Know, people who are listening can't. People who are watching can't see this. Have you seen like me and Craig score the same, but our averages are different? Yeah. Doesn't make that sense. Works. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it makes zero sense. Maths is math. <laughs> that. That yours must be rounded up. Maybe actually, yeah, it's probably just that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah the formula is exactly the same. I mean, if, if we were going to end the scores right now, Joe would win. Because his average is higher. Oh, that, I forgot to put most destructive losses. 
to when the Bears lost to the Raiders in week five because it stopped me from getting a perfect clean sweep. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Right. Wild card. We'll go a AFC first, I guess. We've got Raiders at Bengals. Uh, go on, Tim. Do you want to start us off this one? I've hardly picked this Raiders all season long, so I'm not going to jinx it by picking them this time. So I've got the Bengals by 10. I'm, I'm with you, Bengals by 10. Oh, I don't think it'll be that. I don't think it'll be that big, but Bengals by six. I was very tempted to pick the Raiders on this, but I've gone Bengals by seven. I think this is probably the closest one. I think mm -hmm. I think the Raiders could win it, but all the Bengals are just playing really well. Um, Patriots and Bills. Joe, you can start this one off. The Bills are going to win, but Patriots may too. What I'd like <laughs> to see. Tim? I've got Bills by seven. Uh, yeah. Bills by six. I've got Bills by four. I think it'll be a little bit closer. Yeah. Uh, Eagles at Buccaneers. Come on, guys. Eagles by three. I really want to. I really, really want to know. Bucks by ten. I've also got the same Bucks by 10. Yeah, I've gone Bucks by 11. Okay, you shall see. Uh, 49ers at Cowboys. Uh, as much as I hate it, I've got the Cowboys by seven here. I'm confident in my pick. I've gone Cowboys by three. I love the 49ers to yeah, win that. 49ers by seven, I'm confident, weirdly. If Jimmy G <laughs> plays that well again, then yeah. yeah. But he's just a ram killer. I'm going to change mine. I'm going yes. 49ers by eight. Come on, Tim. It's in, it's in Dallas, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. but it's Cowboys and playoffs. They can't like... Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, but they normally do one and done. Because if I think if I, I, I think if I'm right in saying they win this, we lose and the Cardinals lose. They play the Packers in the divisional round. And they, they, they get just, their hearts shattered again. Yeah, Aaron <laughs> Rodgers can just kill them again. <laughs> oh, I kind of want to swap, though. Hmm. <laughs> Tim, are you swapping? Yeah, I was think. Yeah, I have. I've gone 49ers. Uh, I was tempted just because I had them as my Super Bowl pick. So like it's still it's still it's still going I guess I uh, you know I think didn't you have them going to Super Bowl as well Tim or was it you Joe? No, yeah, well, I'm doing it. I go forty nine. I've I've just got no faith in the Cowboys. I don't know what it is. I did it at the beginning of the season. I just I've I've gone from <laughs> lone wolf into now Craig is like wolf. In. If the forty yeah, nineers win that game, game. Our, our Super Bowl prediction still goes. Like it's still still alive. Yeah, that's the dream, Craig. Yeah. That's the dream. Uh, Steelers at Chiefs. Go on, Craig. Uh, I've gone Chiefs by 10. Yeah, it's going to be, I think, Chiefs by 9. Yeah, I've also gone Chiefs by 12. I might turn it. No, I'm sticking with 12. By 12. Yeah, I think it's going to be Ben's last shootout. Yeah. Uh, Chiefs by 14. Nice for him to get into the playoffs in his last season, though. Yeah. Uh, Cardinals at Rams. This is probably the the juicy game. Um, I'll I'll take Cardinals by four. I, I like. I think Matt Stafford's not shown up. Uh, Sean McVay owns Cliff Kingsbury. Rams by three. Yeah, I've gone Rams by seven. I think Cooper Cup just like they've got it's just going to just rain on them. Yeah, I've got Rams by six. Okay. Uh, bold predictions. Tim, what's yours? I've got overtime in three out of the six games. Could you imagine? Whoa. <laughs> 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 a lot of overtime this season. Can I say, my ball prediction last week, Raven Steelers to be decided by a field goal. Yeah. yeah it's a happy, sad one, isn't it? It was. It made me, I died a little inside, but it was like a little, <laughs> just a little consolation to take with me. Joe, what's yours? Mine is for there to be Two pick sixes in the Patriots Bills game. Yeah. Two or more. Sorry. Who's throwing them? <laughs> uh, at least one is Mac. Okay. Craig, what's yours? I think Pat's Bills will be under 40 points. Mm -hmm. So I looked at the over under, and the over under was a 45, I think. 
Okay. The bookies have it. Uh, I've got four plus interceptions in Chiefs and Steelers. Because I think you're right in that it's going to be Ben's last game. So if they're down in the second half, he's yeah. not going to care, is he? He's just going <laughs> to fuck it as hard as he can down the field. Okay, I'll yeah. take it for them. Right. Yeah, this is this is winning time in the playoffs. Uh, so mailbox time. We actually have a mailbox, guys. Uh, I have the questions here on my phone. So, Simon, friend of the show, uh, I'll start the ball rolling. Flores is obviously the shot firing today. Be interested in your take. So we have discussed this, but let's go back to it. Brian Flores. Is he offensive or defensive? I can't remember. He's defensive, isn't he? Because he's an yeah. ex-linebacker. Yeah, yeah. Defensive. I've got to give a shout out to Simon who actually asked the question because he did say when we were talking about it on Sunday, he wouldn't be surprised if... He said it'd be a shock, but it wouldn't be a, a huge shock if he got fired. So there was obviously chat around the Dolphins fan campfire about getting rid of him, so... I think he's the first NFC, uh, AFC East coach to have beaten Bill or swept the Patriots since, like, 2003 yeah. or something. <laughs> How do, yeah, do, do, are you happy he's gone out of your division, Joe? Are you are you sad? Oh, 100 percent Yeah, he was turning that Dolphins team around. I mean, mm-hmm. we've got the Bills playing well, and the Bills are going to be good for God knows how long now. With it. Well, especially if Josh Allen keeps it up. But yeah, that that was a big part. The big part of the Miami was their defense. And one of their like one of the hardest defenses to read in the whole of the NFL, and that's in our division. Mm-hmm. We play them twice. So yeah, I'm very happy to see him gone, which it makes me think that I, you know, I, I wonder how Miami fans feel about that. But yeah, it's a, it's a great thing for us. Let me flip the question and what coach would you not want to see the Dolphins pick up? Harbour, probably. Has, if he I, been, has he been linked to them at all? To the Dolphins? Yeah. I think so, so, basically he has, but the Dolphins owner went to Michigan and he said that he doesn't want to see Jim Harbour leave Michigan. Uh, take that take take that with the end of that also. How do you feel about the Jets then Joe? Do you think are you concerned about them all and Salah and what's going on in New York at the moment? Yeah. I will never <laughs> ever ever be concerned about the Jets. <laughs> I think that's now. I, I think I, I think Zach Wilson was showing signs of life towards the end of the season. He's got something there. Salah, I think, needs another season to do his thing. I, I I like him as a coach, and I think he could do good things at the Jets. But we got two top ten picks in the draft. I think, I think in a nutshell, what I took from the Jets was their offense was dog shit, but the defense could show up. They were better so, this year as well. So next yeah, year, when the Jets get to the Super Bowl, it was 21-18 on the 13th of the first 22. Joe said, I will never worry about the Jets. <laughs> okay, here's a soundbite. <laughs> um, next question is from Neil Gannon. He asked us, in terms of all-time NFL, A, how bad of a loss was the Colts' loss? And B, have you seen a team absolutely give up as much as the Giants? Let's go with the Colts first. Where would we rank it on all-time worst loss? Would you give it like a top five, top 10, top 20? Like, we're probably putting Falcons Super Bowl as the top. Yeah. It, yeah. They have, I believe there's been like more at stake. I know it's playoffs, it's quite a big mm. thing. And the Colts, if they got in, you know, they would have been a dangerous team. But there has been losses where there's been a lot more at stake, as you mentioned there with the... With that, I don't know, but for like regular season games, it's got to be very high up there. I've got top 10 all the time for sheer shift the beddedness. The like impact all they had to do, have as well. All they yeah. had to do was beat the Jaguars. And they got the worst team, the really. Yeah. Shit the beddedness. <laughs> yeah, like it's, it's, it's now meant like they don't trust their quarterback. What yeah. are they going to do as a team? Their defensive coordinator is a target for head coaching, Matt Eberflus. You've like, got 
you've got Carson Wentz, who's a big superstar you've just traded for. Like he's he's you know he's done stuff with the Eagles. Like obviously big name. You've got Jonathan Taylor, number one running back in the league. Taylor you've got, Hill. Yeah, you've got Leonard, one of the best linebackers yeah. in the league. Like you've got so much talent on that team. You know what I mean? I mean even like Hilton's not like superstar wide receiver, but he's experienced. He does bits. Like you've got so much talent on that team, and then. You go up against the worst team in the league. You've yeah, got Trevor so, Lawrence who hasn't found his feet. And the week before you played the Raiders, and you knew all you had to do was beat the Raiders, who weren't doing that well. They'd just beaten the who was it, the Browns, who lost half the team to COVID. So we weren't looking that good at the time. They lose to us and then they lose to the Clowns. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, have the have the Giants ever get uh, any team ever given up more than the Giants? I don't, you don't really see it much in, in football, no. do you? Just like the obviously Eagles did do it last season a bit with putting Nate Sudfeld in, but you rarely see proper tanking where it's like we actually want to lose. I don't know. I can think of a couple of Brown seasons in the past which have been pretty bad. Um, I don't know. The Lions are bad, but they normally keep it close. Like they normally keep fighting. Even Lions always them. tried. Yeah. Like, this is the thing. Yeah. I think that's what makes it worse. I don't think the yeah. Giants were giving up. I think they were <laughs> trying to do their best, and they were awful. I mean, they did. They, they were like they did have like the guy in the bed shop at QB at one point. Like they, they were, they were thin. You know what I mean? And then they did yeah. lose um, Saquon as well. And like, yeah, you got Joe Judge. I think it's just a whole recipe for disaster. You lost the best yeah, players. The you, coach is not made out for hu- it. You're in the huddle on your own twenty yard line, second and eleven. <laughs> And they're like, no, no, you've got signals wrong, mate. That's quarterback sneak. Uh, yeah, that's what we're doing. <laughs> what? Twice. <laughs> <laughs> Do you well, think he's like, like the only thing I can in my head that can like even remotely make sense of it is he's thought right. Like, what's the one play I can call here that they're not going to expect? Like, what's the least likely thing they're going to expect? Let's do it. You know what I mean? And he's gone. Like, they're not going to expect QB sneak, and then. The play designed to make me fall over after two yards. Yeah, he's gone. To, he's, he's lent too much into that idea and not thought it through. The only thing that would have topped it would have been like a fake field goal from their own twenty. That would have been excellent, or just a field goal. That would have been brilliant. Done for it. A quadruple reverse to the punter. <laughs> right. Well, thank you for the questions. Oh, Please that's an them. example. Sorry of the game right. where they gave up when Lane Kiffin knew he was going to get sacked as the Raiders coach. He sent Sebastian Janikowski out the last play for half time to try a 76 yard field goal. Legatron. I mean if anyone was going to do it, it would be Legatron. <laughs> uh, yeah, so if you do have questions for us, please do send them your way. We'll have a chat about them. Uh, that's it for this episode, unless there's anything else you want to talk about, boys. Uh, if you are listening to our ELF content, we are going to be getting an episode out about that. Uh, there's some exciting stirrings in the ELF world uh, including what was it Gary Kubiak from the Broncos is connected with the Rockslav Panthers so yeah well we will dedicate an episode to that because we do love the ELF Um, you can follow all of this on our social medias which are Joe yeah Twitter and Instagram uh, T at T-A-F-S underscore UK and our Facebook is that's American Football Show I still remember that always (laughs) Uh, and this is going to go on YouTube as well. Uh, you can find that on That America Football Show just by searching it. We've also got the website, thatamericafootballshow.com. Uh, any good stuff you've seen on lockdown lids recently, Craig? Uh, they've got some more mystery boxes up. Um, again, like the like full size mini one. Um, yeah, check them out. Always put stuff on there. But yeah, uh, thank you everyone for listening. Uh, please, wherever you're listening from, if you want to give us some feedback, uh, give us a like, let us know where you're listening from, we'll add you to the map. Uh, anything else before we get going, boys? So, yeah, just before we go, while we were talking about lockdown lids, I'll just, I don't know, if, if anyone is listening who is linked there, I'd just like to give my condolences to the Macy Side Night Talks. Um, recently, one of their players over the holiday period um, took his own life. Um, I know it's a team that's really heavily linked in terms of uh, with a, a mental health charity called Lift and Live, um, in terms of just, you know, fellas coming together and just letting people know that it's okay sometimes not to be okay and there's always people to talk to so I'd just like to say if anyone's ever feeling that way um, there's always people out there you can talk to just reach out to someone and to speak to someone 
Well said, mate. Well said. Okay. Um, but that's it from us. Hopefully you enjoy the episode and we will get to you next time. Yes, win, baby. <laughs>